News, the Department of Homeland Security has just confirmed to CNN that federal law enforcement agents have raided properties owned by musician and producer Sean Diddy Combs. At this rate, wasn't the first time Diddy found himself in controversy. In late 2023, his ex-girlfriend Cassie filed a lawsuit accusing him of rape and repeated physical abuse throughout their on and off relationship. Diddy denied these grave allegations and the lawsuit was promptly settled out of court shortly after Cassie's filing. New surveillance footage obtained exclusively by CNN appears to corroborate some of the allegations of abuse against music mogul Sean Diddy Combs. The video captured on multiple cameras shows Combs wearing only a towel, assaulting his then girlfriend Cassie Ventura in a hallway at a Los Angeles hotel in March 2016. A lawsuit filed by Ventura in November last year and settled the next day referenced actions that seem to match those seen in this video. What did you know back then, three, that four Cassie years was ago? Gonna come forward. So, what, what did you? How did you know? What did you know about what Cat? Because to, wish to I hear that explain. Yeah, but... Um, but if I explain how I knew Cassie was gonna come forward, that could hurt some people. I don't spend time around Cassie, and I haven't seen Cassie in person since she was with Brian Leslie. Was there something in her eyes that you saw? The way, like now I'm that put it to you this way, there are mutual acquaintances between her and I, mm. and that's as far as I can go. Okay. Do you think she was the only one getting banged by him? Do you think this man had this woman search for prostitutes online just for them to have sex with her? It's something fishy about that, bro. Because you got to realize this lawsuit and the information they had and they gave the Diddy people was six months ago. So some of that stuff was cut out. We're going to give you this, but you got to cut this part out. Let's just say, allegedly, just for the sake of it, Cassie wasn't the only one who wanted, or she didn't want it, but Cassie who searched for the big black, and she was searching for the big black, not only for herself, but for somebody else who we all know that was in the room with her. So if he want to see it, and he want her to touch it, he might that other person in the room with her just might want to feel it, allegedly. She said it's a freak off session. If she says a freak off section, brother, she ain't the only one freaking off. The prostitute ain't the only one freaking off. Old boy is freaking off also. I think that, and, and me just being a trained investigator and reading through the lines of certain things, and one time I had read something that Cassie couldn't take it no more. She told her friend, and this was she she was under a non-disclosure and everything like that. She told her friend she couldn't take it no more because she had seen this dude do something. I've heard plenty of stories about him being on a, that same yacht that Kim was on, and the same yacht she got her nose broken on that somebody was doing something when she, to him when they walked in the room and it caused a confrontation. This is what somebody who was on the yacht said to me. My whole thing about it was this. Anything in that lawsuit, you gotta realize that we only got a portion of it because it's been chopped up. Things has been taken out. So somebody would look a certain way. Cassie may have seen some stuff that she ain't really wanna look at. He didn't want her to know who they were. So if she ever wanted to do what she just did, how does she say who the how the person look? All she could describe is they, if they was wearing masks, unless she saw them before they put the mask on. All these stories has been around the industry for a long time. All these industry people know that Diddy been acting like this and doing this and try to engage other men into sexual acts with him. There was a story that he was trying to get Chris Brown, those young boys that he had, a group B5 or something like that, trying to get them. Yo, it's a lot of stories that goes around in this industry about not just him, other people. Jimmy Iovine, ain't nobody talking about Jimmy Iovine. He got sexual charges and everything on him, but he got those publicists that's keeping it out off of CNN is keeping it off the major news uh, uh, reports. I mean, I can definitely provide context around like this incident. Mm -hmm. um, Cassie com confided in me about this incident when I was working with her around this time, around 2016. We were working on her sophomore album 
and um, she told me about this situation. Uh, their relationship was um, volatile for sure. Um, and he, like you could tell that she was afraid of him, you know, and that there was a lot of control. And um, yeah, I don't I just, sorry, it's, it's witnessing, what do you, like no, what seeing, do you, what do you seeing, feel, feeling. <clears throat> well, I mean, the thing is, is like, like <coughs> I said, this is something that, that Cassie um, confided in me about back then. And like the one thing specifically that always stuck out to me about the story was him throwing the vase at her. And to see it, like to see, like I remember her saying, you know, you know, I remember it being at the Intercontinental. I remember the like that whole, the whole situation. But to, to like know a story is one thing, but to see it is something different. And then also to see it, somebody that you care about, like, you know, it's that a, a video of my friend getting violently assaulted is all over the world and no one was there to help her and it just Aubrey O'Day, a former member of the girl group Danny Kane, also came forward with her own disturbing revelations about working with Diddy. O'Day alleged she was fired from the group in 2008 because she refused to comply with certain expectations outside of work. And so I've given a lot of thought and I'm gonna let you out your contract too. As far as for you, Dawn, I still want to make music with you. I still want you to be signed to the label. Um, and, you know, if I decide to put that together, Danny D. Kane, then, you know, you'll be the only member that'll still be there. I just want to throw you the facts, okay? Sure. So this is long after we have two double platinum albums, $14, $15 an album from two million albums is, what is the math on that, $48 million? And this benevolent man who's this now had a change of heart and has decided to pay us as talent we only get the amounts due since sony bought our catalog okay so streaming for the past couple years it's about 800 900 dollars i have to sign an nda that i will never disparage puff bad boy janice combs or justin combs music or emi or sony ever in public I would like to do a documentary for Hulu or Netflix or Amazon, a streaming site. I offered some of the girls, hey, if you need eight, nine hundred bucks, I'll give it to you. Don't sign this. I knew after my attorney looked into it and saw that we weren't really getting our publishing back from back when we actually sold as many records as we did, which would financially change all of our lives. And we did write on songs, and so we would get a nice chunk of money. Mm. Um, I saw all the headlines about Diddy's being benevolent and giving all of his blessed artists their publishing back because it's, you know, notoriously known throughout time that he, he screws his artists over, mm -hmm. allegedly. So when that came to me and then my attorney confirmed, uh, it's not really him, it's Sony, and now they own your catalog, and now, um they are giving you the rights to whatever it's made in this small period of time and in the streaming age when you have to stream something a million times to make a cent what good does that even do me right mm -hmm. and then um it came along with a silencer basically in so many words it came along with a very long drawn out you can never speak of all of these things and people ever again. And these people, these people, the people that they've ever worked with and anyone that they've ever worked with, who's worked with, who's worked with. Mm. I mean, it went on for generations. It basically would cover everyone in the music industry. Right. So I knew at that point, he's not being benevolent. He's covering his ass for something. And that's when I wrote my band and I told them, please do not sign this. Something bad is gonna happen. Or the only other thought I had was he's promoting an album. The thought that I didn't have at the time that I kind of have now is, was the album also an additional distraction? 
Hmm. Even media personalities like Wendy Williams couldn't resist speculating on Diddy's relationship with Cassie. The first woman to uncover the homo thugs. She talking about Diddy. That's what these download b was called when Wendy first started talking about it in the 90s, the homo thug. So you hear about stories of Diddy like shooting people, yeah. blowing up cars. Yeah. Is he this gangster that behind the scenes that ever, is that him? Was that Shout around? out to Wendy Williams. Comedian Cat Williams made enigmatic remarks about Diddy and other deviants facing repercussions in 2024. Are you not afraid about being blackballed again? These are some power people. These people are not powerful. Satan can't create anything. That includes blessings for his people. Do you know what the number one job of somebody that sold their soul in Hollywood is? Is to act like it didn't happen. They all do the same job. But I'm not scared of being the competition. Yeah, on paper, they're a better team. They have all the assets and resources and we don't. But let us get on the line, boy, and see if that factors in. I guarantee you it won't. All of these shortcut takers, they canceled me for talking about Harvey Weinstein before the thing came out, but he offered to suck my p in front of all my people at my agency. I told him no, what y'all do? And this is why when I walk in a room, heads go down. Behind my back, I'm nothing. I'm just a regular old comedian, but in my face, no, no, no. The king has walked in and they have to respect it only because I'm not taking the shortcuts. They pay you to not talk about things they don't want you to talk about. I came in this business saying I was gonna expose. When I talked about Michael Jackson, when I talked about R. Kelly, they canceled me for these things because why would you talk about another black dude? Race is not where the line is drawn. It's God's side and the other side. And we don't care nothing about the other side, period. Period, all of these uh, big dick deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you, all of these uh, big dick deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. T.G. Jakes, any of them, the, all, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. And, and, and anyone who takes that the wrong way know why they take it the wrong way. The truth is the light. I didn't have no more to be. Amen, amen. Allegations from individuals like Virginia V and Uncle Luke further deepened the murky waters surrounding Diddy's reputation. And so I turned over to Meek and I said, happy birthday. He put his hand out and he was like, thank you. So I reached his hand and shook it. And as I shook Meek's hand, he turned around and saw it and he got so mad. Wow. And, um... And then we we probably like stayed like 20 minutes after that happened. And then when we got in the car, he like grabbed my hair. We were in the um, one of those Escalade trucks. Okay. So I was sitting on this side, he was on the other side and he like grabbed my hair and like cussed me out um, for doing that. He was like, why the fuck, can I cuss? Yeah. Oh, he was like, why the fuck you like, you shaking his hand for like just, so it, like it was that. just I was like, like a jealous rage. Yeah, I was like, I, I was say? just saying happy birthday, nothing else. He thought, I think he thought I was trying to be sneaky behind his back because I like reached over mm -hmm. when he like leaned forward to talk to somebody else. So he thought I was trying to be sneaky. And you were how old at this time? Um, I was 22 probably. Wow. <clears throat> okay. Um. And then, um. He did this, so King Los was sitting in the back. Okay. And then when we got to the hotel, um, it got even worse. And um, he like, he like tried to, he took one of my sh heels and tried to throw it at me. And then he like, like mushed my face and like really hard and made my nose bleed. Wow. And the only person that ever, every time me and he like, we get into like fights like that. The only person that ever helped me was um, D Rock. Everyone else just kind of just allowed it to happen and just like looked the other way. Sean Diddy Combs served as a mentor to Usher, even bringing the budding R&B singer to New York City to live with him for a year. To New York City, 
and I lived with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. That's the crazy thing. Now, that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending New you York over to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. <laughs> to learn <laughs> some Flavor Camp. Yeah, Flavor that's camp. what it was called. And you're going to go to Puff Daddy's. He's gonna In pre- the 90s. Do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and orging like nonstop, right? No, nah, not really. Come I mean, on. but did I, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it was, and it was, <laughs> but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was, it was pretty wild. It was, so nobody it was tried to, you know, some woman didn't come along. I didn't and say that. Okay. I, I didn't but say you that. Didn't. <laughs> what I did say is that there were very curious things taking place. Uh huh. And I didn't necessarily understand it. Uh huh. Biggie Smalls was Biggie there. Biggie Smalls was there. Lil Kim, Craig Mack. All know, these people all are hanging these, around. All, yeah, man. Faith Evans. Jodeci, Mary okay? J. Blosh. They ain't know nothing about this shit. Oh. <laughs> I was having a good time. You know what I mean? Does he have you doing any chores? Are you doing dishes at all? I mean, to keep you humble somewhat? Or are you just like, can you stay up till four in the morning with them and party? I mean, I could. I yeah. actually stayed up longer than them. <laughs> and, I, and, what ta- and do you have money? What's <laughs> going on? I mean, I had like per diem. Yeah. Uh-huh. I, had, I had like, you know, what like a, a living. life. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. 14 years old. You're a dad now. Would you ever send your kid to Puffy Camp? Hell no. <laughs> See? In this carnival of chaos, it's clear that Diddy's world is anything but ordinary, with parties that make Gatsby's shindings look tame. Yeah, we uh, we want to thank you. Come here. Don't, don't sit on the bed at night. No homo. No, just, just don't get close to the bed. Don't get close to the bed. But it's just like, yo, we want to thank you for hosting the thing, man. Man, you, you, it's been a pleasure. You didn't have to do it. You did it. No, no, I definitely didn't have to do it. I, I definitely didn't have to. Uh, first and foremost, I'm not getting in the bed. Uh, you know, shout out to him and what he did. I'm just going to... If we can, just let's, let's just put the camera a little this way, just so we're not, I don't want my shot to even, like, I don't want it to come close to the bed at all. I, sh- I should look like he fresh off the goddamn plane. I should, I should, I should. Fresh off the guard stage. That's my brother right here from day one. We used to wake up and, I mean, damn, pause, but like, check this out. I mean, I mean, back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the, over the Frosted Flakes, you know what I'm saying, before pause was invented, you know what I'm saying, but it's my brother for real, we used to actually wrestle off of the, off of the Frosted Flakes because he used to always get up early with me, and now he's one of the richest stars in the world, and I'm Yo, like, what, what the, the f- did Puff, Puff just say? As Diddy himself was proclaimed, can't nobody hold me down, except maybe the FBI. 